Hey guys, how's it going? B-Dog here. So, I'm just going to run over what was covered over the live stream today for the DBD third year anniversary. I wrote down a bunch of stuff and it's going to be very useful and also there's a lot of big news that has came with this live stream and I'm going to go over them. It's There's just a lot of big news, a lot of good news for DBD, a lot of good ideas and the way the direction of the game is going i'm so excited just to quickly go over those so let's go ahead and hop right into it all right so the first thing that i want to cover which i know i was excited to hear about it and get more information on him and i'm sure you guys are too and that is all about ghostface so Unfortunately, he is not the original Ghostface from all the Scream movies. Unfortunately, I am just assuming that's all they got the licensing for was just the mask. And uh, there was no, you know, there was nothing said about a survivor or a new map or anything like that. But here's the thing, though. With them only have the licensing for the mask, they can kind of make Ghostface their own killer. So it's kind of a weird hybrid of licensing and original ideas but pretty much they didn't go into a lot of detail with his backstory but essentially he is a reporter that has a dark side so during the day essentially he reports on all these crimes these murders and all of that but by night he himself is the murderer so he's kind of like a Jacqueline and Hyde type character. He has a, a weird split personality. And so I thought that was kind of cool that they, you know, implemented something like that and just kind of made it their own. So I thought that was kind of cool, but let's kind of go over what he is essentially, what his ability is and his perks and whatnot. So his ability is called Night Shroud. Essentially, it gives you a terror radius of zero and you can move at full speed. To me, that is cool as hell. I think that is a nice addition to the game. It adds a little bit more fear to it, more jump scare, and I feel DBD really needs a lot more of that. And also on top of it, during Night Shroud, his red stain is completely gone. Unfortunately, they didn't say how long it lasts, or if they did, I did not pick up on it. But anyways, so... He has the ability to crouch, as you guys have seen with other, you know, video leaks of Ghostface. He can do all that, but his main ability is if he stalks you for four seconds, you are then marked, and then you then get the exposed status effect, meaning you are a one hit down, and that lasts for 20 seconds. So if there's a lot of stalking going on, Ghostface is going to go on a rampage, but it seems like he can really only target one survivor at a time, unlike Michael, where he can just get everyone. And then, there is a counter to Ghostface from what they said, so essentially, if he is in Night Shroud, all you gotta really do is, as long as you're within 32 meters and he is in Night Shroud, all you gotta do is look at him for a second, and that will cancel his power. So... He is going to be a very skill-based character. He's going uh, to just rely a lot on stealth and all that stuff. Kind of like how like Amanda is, where stealth is kind of uh, essential to her success. Or like how Michael is, it's very crucial to be stealthy so you can get those hits, down survivors, and all that good stuff. But with that, let's go ahead and quickly run over his three perks he's got so his first perk is called I'm all ears so <clears throat> if you do a fast action like a fast vault or you vault into a locker really fast your aura is shown for six seconds which to me is cool it's a great way to track survivors especially if they're being toxic or something you can stop that right then and there but it does have a cooldown there was no number on how long the cooldown is from anything I heard. And then the second perk is called Thrilling Tremors. And the way this works is if you down a survivor or grab them off of a gin, 
It blocks any gin that is not being worked on by a survivor, but it does have a cooldown. Now, I think this is really cool because it kind of adds a different element rather than just like the meta of just running ruin and you can also combo those two and make it to where the game slows down a lot and to me that is cool as hell and then his last perk which is honestly my favorite perk of his it's <laughs> honestly it is cool it, it is just so fucking cool so it is called Furds of Chase, so essentially it is an obsession perk, so each time you hook a s uh, I cannot talk for whatever reason, why I don't know, I've been rambling on too long, but each time you hook a survivor, which has to be your obsession, you gain a token. Now what that does is it reduces your terror radius by 4 meters while you're in chase, so that's going to come in handy quite a bit, but here is the best part about it. Each time your obsession is unhooked, the rescuer, who is the survivor, is then the obsession. It is, to me at least, it's a fun way to always keep the game going. And you're always constantly on a mission just to constantly down people, lower that terror radius, and all that good stuff. And then also, we can play the PTB on June 4th, and then... The release of uh, Ghostface, just for everyone, is June 18th. Now, with my rambling out of the way, let's go on to the next big thing that was talked about in the stream. Alright, so another big thing that was really crucial with the stream, which I'm really happy that they went more in-depth with on this one, and that is the Freddy rework. And honestly, I am very pleased with... All the stuff that they've done with the Freddy rework and all the stuff that they're trying to achieve with him. So essentially the the changes that have been made to him have made him, at least in my opinion, a lot easier to play with and against. So I'm just going to kind of briefly run over what they are. So he no longer has a debuff action, kind of like whenever he puts you asleep, there's really no debuff anymore. It's so like that is a big plus. And Dream Demon has kind of like a new a new cycle. It kind of works in a much better way, much more efficient what it should have been in the first place. So essentially if he puts you asleep, you can see Freddy from a certain range, but once he's out of that range, he becomes invisible and it's more it, it it's more or less just very mind gameish, which like I think that's what Freddy should have been. And whenever you're asleep, you will hear a lullaby, but if you are awake, it seems from what they said that there is no lullaby, it is just straight up a terror radius. So that is another big plus for me. Like I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but that is quite helpful and it adds much more of a scare factor especially when you're asleep and you hear the you know the lullaby and then also from what they said is you no longer have to wait seven seconds to hit a survivor anymore at all and then the obviously the dream world is staying like that's his whole ability so there's nothing his whole power really hasn't changed a lot to be honest, but one positive that they did say is in the dream world, it's not as grainy and it's not as, it's not difficult to see people now. It's, I mean, it's still going to be like a little bit grainy, but it's not, it just looks better overall as a whole. And also they added a couple different ways to wake yourself up. So one way that is relatively new is Whenever you're sabotaging a hook and you miss a skill check, that is an extra way to wake up. And in my opinion, I always thought that always should have been a way to wake up just because you're missing a skill check and I'm sure sabotaging a hook is going to be really loud considering the killer gets a notification. So I'm happy that they finally implemented that. And then another way that they discussed to wake yourself up when playing against Freddy is 
Essentially, around the map, there are going to be these time clocks, just like a regular clock. And anyways, you can go wake yourself up at one of those. Now, that's really helpful, especially if everyone's asleep or you're just not getting the skill checks. You know, like to me, again, that that makes things a lot easier and just overall makes him a lot better to play against because everyone knows no one likes to play against Freddy. It's it's awful, but now they've made it, at least in my opinion, a little bit better in that regard. And then also, he's got a couple a couple new abilities that come with Dream Demon that I think are amazing and they are just they're they're just really spot on. I am happy with these changes, so I'm just going to quickly go over them. So, Whenever you are asleep, Freddy can put these fake pallets around, kind of like the doctor in a sense, but you can actually interact with the pallets, and anyways, once you drop the pallet, they explode into blood, meaning it's a fake pallet, and then Freddy can obviously get the hit on you. And then also, another thing is, whenever Freddy is, you know just traversing around the map he can teleport to generators now now again they really didn't specific they you know they didn't go into a lot as far as that goes because it's still in development but from what I understand is Freddy can mark certain generators and he can just teleport to that generator and just apply pressure accordingly so it's kind of similar in the same regard how the nurse is, how she can just kind of warp around. But again, from what I understand, he has to mark certain generators, and that's how it that's how he kind of, you know, just gets around the map a little bit better and just applies more pressure. Overall, I think the changes are amazing. I think this is really going to make Freddy much more viable. I think he's going to be much more fun to play against. I think he's going to be overall just fun and scary now rather than just annoying because, you know, no one likes Freddy really. But those are the uh, Freddy rework changes. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and go to some more stuff that was set in the live stream. All right, so. Another important thing that came from the stream, which I thought was really cool, is the new archive system, if you will. So essentially what it does, it expands the universe of Dead by Daylight, and you have quests that you have to complete. Now I'm just going to briefly explain why the quests are important for this archive system and all of that. So essentially, the archive system will explain much more of the backstory for survivors and killers and just kind of explain their past much more than their bio does and to me I've always been very interested in the lore of Dead by Daylight and I feel that this is kind of going to be the thing that will answer any questions we've ever had about survivors and or killers so to me like that's really cool but so anyways with the archive system there is an entity like being he is the overseer so what essentially he does is once you complete these quests he probes into the survivors or killers mind and will pretty much replay memories there are cinematics and stuff like that and there are journal entries so that way you can really get to know your character that you love to play as you know like to me like that's cool as hell and then there are charm cosmetics for killers and survivors just kind of as a, you know, just as kind of like an extra cosmetic, just to, kind of for bragging rights, just to say like, hey, like I completed certain quests. And also when completing these quests, you get special cosmetics. And the best part about it is it's all free. It's all about the grind. So the more you grind and complete certain quests, the much you're going to get so much more cosmetics and learn you know all about your favorite dead by daylight character their backstory and all that and to me i thought that was really neat and like i said i've always been very interested in the lore but with that being said let's go ahead and hop into the next thing that was important about the stream 
Alright, so another thing that I thought that was rather important about the stream, and obviously everyone has wanted this for a long time, and I think it's, it's I'm just glad it's finally happening, and that is the rank rework. So essentially, they didn't delve too deep into it, but essentially, there are going to be rank rewards, and essentially you're going to be just rewarded based off of your rank. So for the foreseeable future, or at least in the near future, there is going to be rewards for achieving a certain rank. So now we won't have that issue of we get to rank one just for bragging rights. Now they didn't specify whether it was going to be, you know, every rank that was going to get a reward or if it was specifically rank one. But I'm very interested just to see how that works. And then also another thing that they really didn't go too, too deep into it. I wish they would have because it was kind of confusing. But apparently they are going to have kind of like a player progression system, I guess, to where you can, I guess, compare yourself with other players. So for example, like if you are the trapper you can compare yourself with other trappers or other killers that you play as and kind of see where you're at or if you're on par with them. Like I said, they really didn't go too, too much into it, but I'm interested just to see how it works and just to see how it all kind of comes together because it's a very interesting concept and I'm just very interested and I would like to see kind of like, it seems like it's almost like a leaderboard type system without the leaderboard, if that makes sense. It's just comparing, I guess, one skill with another person's skill. If, like I said, I'm just assuming that's what it is. Like, don't quote me on that because they really didn't go too, too deep into it. But with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into some of the map changes. Alright, so another thing that was very important to me and like I thought that it was cool that they went back and did this, so there are going to be, I guess, a lot of map changes in the future as far as layout and whatnot, but the one that they really stressed the most was uh, Springwood, and so essentially what they are doing, from what I understand, they are going to eliminate a lot of the useless looping areas which if you guys play killer or you're a killer main you know it can be utter hell at times and it is just so good to see that they're doing it so for example one thing that they really noted which I thought was amazing is the pallet that's always by like the cinder blocks it's finally getting short and it's going to be much more of a mind game thing rather than just like an infinite loop so I always thought that that was a good idea to do and I'm so happy that they implemented it and I could not be happier with that change that makes things a lot easier another thing that that is currently in the works from what I understand and what they said is there is going to be four new layouts ex just for Springwood itself. So it's not always going to be the same. So there's going to be constant changes, kind of like every other map, like McMillan Estate or Coldwind Farm. There's going to be four new layouts for Springwood. And again, I think that's a very, a very, very positive change. I believe Springwood always kind of needed to be reworked. And I'm happy that it finally is. And then another thing, just since we're on the topic about it, from what they said, they're currently working on totem placements just to make them better and putting them in better places rather than just always out in the open. So I was really happy to hear that as someone who plays Killer a lot. And then another thing that they are eliminating or they're currently trying to work on is the abusing of windows and whatnot. And... So essentially they're going to make it where it is going to be completely skill based and there's not going to be a lot more infinite loops. Now they didn't specifically say what maps other than Springwood but they were really focused on Springwood and I believe that map really needed a lot of changes. So again I'm happy with that change. So let's quickly go over what we're going to be doing for the anniversary event real quick. 
All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is just kind of the anniversary event and kind of what's going on and kind of when DBD is coming to Nintendo Switch and all that good stuff. So let's just kind of briefly go over it. So they did say in the stream that there are going to be double blood points from June 14th to the 18th and from June 18th to the 2nd. That's when the event's going to start. They really didn't go too, too much into what the event would consist of or what was going to happen. I'm assuming they're going to do it like they always do, where it's just kind of a surprise and we just go from there. But at least we're getting double blood points for sure. I'm assuming, if I had to take a guess, there's probably going to be special cosmetics. Like I said, I don't know that, but I would assume that's kind of how it's going to go and probably going to have alternate objectives and all that. And then uh, to kind of wrap this up, the Nintendo Switch version is going to come out September 24th of 2019, obviously. So if you're on Nintendo Switch... You guys are going to have DBD on the 24th of September, and then DBD is coming to mobile. There is no set date yet from what I heard or anything like that, but I'm really excited for DBD mobile. I don't really play Nintendo at all, really, but I'm just happy that more people are going to be playing DBD, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making this like I always do. I hope you guys found this really helpful. I'm really excited for all the changes. I am super pumped. I am so excited. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you really enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.